This is Shannon Cook with drywalldoc.com in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Today we're fixing a uh, plaster ceiling that a customer called us about. He had water damage in plaster and that's what happens to plaster when water damage occurs. Uh, the house was built in like the 40s, so it's solid plaster ceiling. Some of the house, some of the ceilings in this house are drywall. They just did additions and stuff like that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna chip out all the all the flaking plaster and get all that out of the way and then we have a product we're going to put over it uh oil base called calcimine recoder that we'll coat it with that blocks all the 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 stains and and the the calcium buildup on the plaster from coming back through then we can solid coat over it with a product we call hot mud it's a powdered mud that dries almost like concrete it's like plaster also and then here we have All right, now we've got a drywall ceiling here that is, it was added on later and it has a uh, sponge or stomp texture that we're gonna match. So we're gonna cut out uh, like half the ceiling up here and then we'll patch it back and I'll match that texture to this. And then we have in the bedroom, We had a tornado about 10 years ago that uh, people come in and just started, they did real shoddy work because they didn't know what they were doing. So roofers would come in and they would uh, have people, you know, just halfway do the work just to get the job done and, and make a lot of money. So we've got to uh, chip this plaster out that's fallen and cracked. We'll, we'll actually, instead of just mudding over it, we'll actually chip out what is, what is messing up. Then we will put our product over it and then our old base product. Then we will uh, solid coat over it with uh, the hot mud product we have. And we'll get it all floated out and we'll just have to show you the process as we do it. So we're going to go ahead and start covering up and get started. slick plaster that they put on. So we're going to recreate the slick plaster over this, but I have to put my oil-based product on this to make it stick and to cover up uh, any stains that try to bleed through or the calcium buildup or anything that comes through from it being wet before. So that's what happens when plaster gets wet. So if you see plaster and it has this stain on it, and you have to uh, you have to use like a calcimine recoder on it. And uh, Benjamin Moore makes calcimine recoder. I'll show you the can so you'll know what what we use. Very few people even know about it. We actually paint ceilings with it because it's a flat oil-based paint that blocks stains, and it looks really good when it dries and it's thick. So you can usually put one thick coat on it, and it works perfect.
Then we have this crack up here, look straight up, um, that, that happens in a lot of plaster jobs. This house was hit by a tornado. The plaster ceiling is still in place. It's stuck on the ceiling really well, but it just cracked in a few places where the house got shook violently. Uh, the plaster's not trying to fall or anything, so we're just going to repair these cracks and sand it and paint it. Like I said, we paint, we prime with the same product that we paint with because it works so well to block stains and it dries flat, it looks really well. And I always use it over plaster because plaster is so easy to let stains come back through after it's painted. We got the sun all scraped and everything now, and then we're gonna prime it with this product. It's calcimide recoder. It's by Benjamin Moore. It's oil-based paint. Now, it is really strong smelling. It's probably freaking stronger than a woman does CrossFit, but we're used to it. I'm not, I'm just doing a little bitty area, so, you know, I know everybody says wear masks and stuff. Hey, this is what I choose to do. Uh, it's open area, I'm not enclosed, and it's just gonna be a small area and I'm gonna be walking off. So, we're just gonna put this on it and let it dry, and it takes about 45 minutes to dry because it is oil based. Let's put it on nice and thick. That'll seal everything up. Or our mud will stick real good because this stuff is kind of sandy up here. Should block all these stains from coming back through. Gonna get into every little crack. Mm -hmm. That will seal these edges up good. Almost like a glue. is real thin you can use those but I like this it's designed for covering up plaster and keeping it from bleeding back through and building up if it gets wet again it will come back through but uh, if it doesn't then it won't come back through Now, will you use a fiber fuse on that crack or no? Yes, yeah, I'll use fiber fuse on that and I'll have to show that product in a minute. What Jeff's talking about is a product called fiber fuse, a fiber fuse that um, it, once you put it on with mud, it blends into the mud, so it's unlike paper tape. Paper tape never fully bonds to the mud. It won't, it, literally becomes one with the mud so you don't have to worry about all that um, it will actually make part but it's like it's just like fiberglass so it, it becomes part of it which is what we want we want it to be one with the ceiling or with the mud because we have a lot of ceilings that when they get wet they will let all the tape fall off Right, we got that primed, we're gonna let it set for about 45 minutes and we'll, then we'll start our mudding. All right, we have the ceiling in the kitchen uh, primed and it's dry. So we're gonna go ahead and take the crack up and start putting the hot mud on.
Let's go Brandon on the side of your hand. You <laughs> got a shirt, don't you? I'm getting one. No way. But, yeah, I remember where my business. I'm going to be like the Canadians that are in the business the longest. I can't say nothing about none of it. got this bit first bed coat done and we'll try to slick it out a little bit to get the lines and dips and stuff out of it just get what I can out before I put the next bed coat on this is a real thick bed coat so you leave lines in it that way you can fill in what you need to and then I always slick it out just to help it be easier to finish Sometimes the middle dries way better because it's thicker mud and it dries faster and starts setting up and the edges will, the edge is still wet but the center solid. So I'll have to wait on that edge to do anything and go ahead and do the center part. for us to put another bed coat on anyway.